every year when Hacktoberfest rolls around, new projects just spawn out of the ether. Now, obviously, I know I'm two months late to this project, but even so, it's still a really cool application. This is LSX, otherwise known as LS Extended. Now, even though it's called LS Extended, it's not really a modification to the way that LS normally works, takes something like Exa or LS Colors, it's more like an extension to the way that CD works. So the typical way you move through a terminal is you do an ls to work out what's in the directory and then cd into that location, then you do another ls and then you'll cd into the next location and then keep doing this until you get to where you want to go. But lsx on the other hand basically merges those two actions together like you would see with something like a terminal file manager like with something like LF, for example, obviously without the file management aspects, it's just the ability to easily move between the directories you want to go to. This is a very simple interface and you'll get used to it very quickly. One thing it doesn't mention on the screen, it does mention you can use the arrow keys, but you can also go and use the Vim keys as well. So J and K to go up and down, and then L to go into a directory, and then H to go out of that directory. You also have the option to press the Enter key as well, and that will take you into a directory if that's the way you prefer to work. Now you might notice these double dots. So like with CD, Say if you go and do cd double dot, that will take you up to the previous directory. That will also do the exact same thing here as well. If you're using enter, for example, there wouldn't be any way to go back to the previous directory without having that. Now, it doesn't include the single dot where it takes you to the current directory because in a situation like this, there's no reason to really include it. Now, you don't just have to scroll through this list. If that's all it let you do, this wouldn't really be that productive. You can also go and press the slash key and then start doing a search. So let's go into repos, this one here. Then let's go into Caden chapters, and now we're there. So... As you type stuff, it's actually going to go and filter the list, and once you do start typing, you can't actually use the Vim keys, because obviously Vim movement keys are letters on your keyboard, so you will have to use arrow keys in that case. I actually find that interaction method pretty convenient, because a lot of the time, I have my right hand on the mouse, so moving my right hand over from the mouse to the arrow keys isn't really that far, and then I can use my other hand to just type out the letters I need to search for. Now you may be wondering, how do we actually CD into a location? Well, this supports CD on exit, so all you need to do is quit out of the application with Control c and now we're in that location. One thing you may have noticed is that LSX wasn't actually showing hidden directories, so that can be done by doing LSX-A. This is the way that I prefer to use it because, for the most part, I want to be able to access my hidden directories. A lot of the time, I'll need to get to places like, say, my config directory, and I, I want that in my list. I get why they're hidden by default, because they're supposed to be hidden directories, but hidden directories are less hidden on Linux and more like slightly obfuscated. One thing you may have noticed with this, which does slightly annoy me, is that it's not actually using my entire terminal window. In this case, there's not actually any reason for me even to need to scroll. I have all of these lines down here where this could be pushed down further. This has a set size and it's going to be exactly the same regardless of how big the terminal window actually is. I would much prefer this to be dynamic. It would make it considerably more useful. And I know there's a way to do this because every single terminal file manager on the planet already does exactly this. It's not a major problem. I'm not saying this is a terrible thing and the application is bad because of it. It's just a slight annoyance I do have. Because this is effectively just a CD application, one thing you may think you can do is LSX and then pass in a directory you want to jump to. Now, I would have assumed this would work. This doesn't actually work. This is actually used for the alias functionality. This functionality doesn't actually exist in the application. You can't just jump directly to a place by just passing in the path. I would really like that being there as an option, just in case, you know, I don't want to be using it in that interactive mode. Sometimes it is just quicker to type it out like this. Now, I mentioned aliases. Like every other custom CD application on the entire planet, it has an alias system built into it. It's nothing really that crazy, but it certainly does the job. So the way we do this is LSX set dash alias, then this takes in two options. The dash n option is going to be the name, let's call this uh, video duh, and then the dash p option is going to be the path. So let's put this one as, 
let's say video and then uh what's the director it's something like youtube there we go and then to upload and let's set it to this one go and run that and then for some reason it says info done not just done or just not just ending with nothing really outputted, but whatever, info done, that's fine. One thing to keep in mind is there isn't a separate command to update an alias. If you want to go and update an alias, all you do is you use the set command with the exact same name and then you give it a different path to go to and then you'll be good to go. If you ever want to check the aliases you have available, that can be done by doing lsx alias. And I actually made one earlier when I was doing some testing and then if you want to go and use the alias, this is why the thing we did before we did lsx and then pass in the directory didn't actually work. Because at this point, if we go and pass in video dir, that is going to jump us directly into that video directory. One way to handle that and the CD functionality without needing a separate option for it would be to make it so you can't name the alias in the style that a path would actually be in. So then if you put in a path, it's going to do a CD, but if you put in something that's not a path, it's going to assume that it's an alias. The only problem with that method is you wouldn't be able to use it to CD into a directory that is within the current directory. For example, let's say I wanted to go into my Patreon directory. Doing LSX Patreon, this would look exactly the same as an alias, even though it is currently a directory we can go into. Now, once you're done with an alias, let's say with the video dirt alias, if you want to remove it, all you need to do is LSX remove dash alias, pass in the name of the alias, so video dirt, and it'll prompt you to delete it. I love that there is a prompt. Please, application developers, if you're making something, have a confirmation prompt. Give me the option to disable it, that's fine, but just have the option there. There are so many applications I try that don't have these, and it deletes something that's actually important. Now, there is supposed to be a completion system where I guess it will autocomplete things like aliases. That can be generated by doing LSX completion. And if you don't include the shell you want to use, it will give you the different shells that are available. In this case, PowerShell actually is supported, which is actually kind of rare to see from applications like this. But I've got the completion script loaded inside of my ZSHRC, and it doesn't seem to be doing anything. I don't know if there's just something I'm missing. Maybe the setup is wrong, but there's no information on how I would go about setting it up. So I'm not sure if it's my mistake or if it's the application not having the script working properly. And I thought maybe it'd work for things that weren't the aliases, things like the options that are available. But even then, I've not noticed anything actually functioning remotely at all. I very well could be doing something wrong, and if the developer sees this and tells me I'm being an idiot, that's good, but you also need some way to tell the users how to set it up. But even so, I don't even expect most applications to try with completion, so the fact they're at least working on it is absolutely a good thing. So if you want to go and install this, it's very simple. All you need to do is go to the GitHub page, download the repo, cd into the directory, then go and chmod the install script to make it executable, and then run the install script. But on Bash, Fish, and ZSH, which you're very likely to be using, I can't imagine you're using PowerShell, you will need to go and source the LSX script to make sure it's being loaded inside of your shell. This can be done right towards the end. I've just got it right here. And then updating is just a matter of updating the git repo and then rerunning the install script. I have not tested the fish or the PowerShell support, so I can't really tell you how well it's actually going to work, but the fact they are listed on the GitHub page here, presumably they function the same way as Bash and ZSH. Now, I know a project like this is by no means an original concept. You can make this yourself by combining LS, CD, and FZF, and it'd probably be better because FZF actually scales to your entire terminal size and also is an incredibly good fuzzy finder. But I like giving developers like this attention because I like developers trying out things and seeing what they can actually make. And I feel like this is a good way to give projects like this feedback rather than just being like, hey, here's an issue, here's another issue, here's another issue. I feel like demonstrating what the application can do can sort of show what it's like in the way that a person would typically use it. Because a problem that every single dev is going to fall into is they're going to be using the project in the way that they expect people to be using it. But when you have someone not involved with the project, you start to see different ways it could be interacted with. 
Anyway, that's enough of me rambling about developers. Rather than telling me your favorite language in the comment section, go out and actually make something. Go make some cool project. Maybe, you know, go and do something like this or something completely different. Go and better the world in some way. And maybe one day I will have a look at your project as well. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon, subscribe, and bear or pay linked in the comments description section down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.